looking at some of the main ideas dealing with electricity, one of the first terms we should make sure we understand is the term resistance. Resistance is the opposition that the current is going to face as it is moving through a circuit. If we want to look at the resistance of a wire, the resistance of the wire depends on three main factors. One factor is the length of the wire. Longer wires are going to have more resistance. The second factor is the cross-sectional area of the wire. Since most wires are circular, we find the area by taking the radius of the wire, squaring it, and multiplying by pi. Use our formula for the area of a circle. As the area gets bigger, that's going to give more space for the electrons to travel through, so that's going to make less resistance. So area goes down the bottom. Bigger areas give you less resistance. The final factor is the wire type. For wire type, there's a term called resistivity, which is a measure of how well electrons can move through the material. Higher resistivity means that the electrons have a harder time moving through the material. Of the three wire types in this program, we have copper with a really low resistivity, the electrons can go through it relatively easily. We have aluminum, where the electrons have a little harder time moving through it. And then finally, nichrome. And in this program, that's the material the electrons have the hardest time moving through. So this formula lets you predict the resistance of a wire, and the resistance of the wire is measured in ohms. Once we know resistance, we can now start to figure out some other things in our circuits. So let's take a look at a very simple circuit where we know the resistance and we know that it's powered by batteries. So first thing we have is the resistance in this circuit is coming predominantly from the resistor. We have our battery box and when we look inside we see that there are six batteries. Okay, since each battery is 1.5 volts, that should give us 9 volts. Just the test, we'll look at our meter, and we can see we're getting right around 9 volts. And then when we look at the current going through the circuit, we see that there is about 213 milliamps. Remember, current is measuring how much charge is flowing through the circuit per second. And we want to see how this current changes as we adjust different properties of our circuit. So let's change the resistor. We're starting with a resistor that's yellow, red, black. This is a really low resistance. We switch now to one where brown is the third band. This is a much higher resistance. And when we go back, we see that we still have 9 volts. That's determined by the batteries. But when we look at the current, we see that it has dropped tremendously. So we get the idea that current goes down when resistance goes up. Let's take a look at our battery box. Let's lower the number of batteries in the box, which will lower our voltage. So now instead of 9 volts, we're down to 6 volts. And you can see that the current in our circuit has dropped off as well. So what we learn from this is what is known as Ohm's Law. It says that the current in the circuit goes up as we increase the voltage. It says the current goes down when we increase the resistance. So the current in amps is equal to the voltage in the circuit in volts divided by the resistance in ohms. Okay, let's take a look at a more complicated circuit. This is known as a series circuit. And a series circuit is one in which there is only one path for the electrons to follow. We can see from our series circuit that there are three different resistors hooked up in series. And the first thing we want to do is look at the current going into each resistor. So when we look at the current going into the first one, it's around 22.6 milliamps. When we look at the current going into the second one, it's about 22.6 milliamps. And when we look at the current going into the third one, we see it is again around 22.6 milliamps. This is our first 
thing we need to remember about a series circuit that the current that comes out of battery has only one place to go so it has to go through all parts of the circuit with equal intensity so the current is the same in all parts of your series circuit. Okay, let's take a look at the voltages. So when we looked inside the battery box, we have six batteries. That should give us a total of nine volts. When we look at the voltage on our resistors, we see that this one is 1.6. Okay, then we scroll along. We go to our next one and we see that this one has a voltage of around two. So let's mark that up, two volts. And then when we go to our final one, the one in the middle here, the one we haven't tested, we see that it is 5.5 .5 volts. Okay, so we can see that our voltages are not all equal to each other, but when we tally them up, we get seven, eight, just about nine volts. Again, because of our meters not being 100% accurate all the time, we may not get it exactly, but we should see that the total voltage that we lose in our three resistors has to equal to the voltage that we started with in our battery box. The batteries are giving the charges energy. They're giving nine joules for each coulomb of charge that leaves the battery. This is a potential difference between the starting point and the ending point. So when they come back around, they should have lost all nine joules for each coulomb that went through the circuit. So in a series circuit, we always have to have our voltages total up to the voltage of our power supply. You'll notice that the middle one got the highest voltage. That's because it has brown as the third band, which means it's got the highest resistance. So the resistor that is the highest resistance will get the most voltage. That means the most energy gets lost in the resistor that was hardest to move through. This makes sense. The resistors that are easy to move through will not take away as much energy. So in our series circuits, to recap, we have current being the same everywhere. We have our voltages totaling up to the total voltage of the power supply and we get the most voltage in the toughest resistor. Okay, the other type of circuit that we may have to deal with is a parallel circuit. In this parallel circuit we also have six batteries to start out. So we've got nine volts and when we take a look we notice that the top resistor gets around 9 volts, the middle resistor gets around 9 volts, and the bottom resistor gets around 9 volts. Okay, so all voltages will equal the voltage of the power supply in a parallel circuit. This makes sense again because the charges that are leaving the battery box have 9 joules of energy for each coulomb of charge and as they go through the circuit they have their choice as to which path they can take and regardless of which path they take they must lose that nine joules worth of energy so all paths will have the same voltage drop as the voltage that we had originally in our battery pack let's take a look at our currents in a parallel circuit so we take a look at the top one, and the top branch has a current of around 140 milliamps. So let's note that, 140 milliamps. Okay, let's see what we have in our other branches. 
So in this one, we have a current of around 570. And again, that was in milliamps. And then we'll take a look at our bottom one. And our bottom one is about 360 milliamps. Okay, so we notice that the currents are not all the same in a parallel circuit. And that's because these are each separate branches with different amounts of current traveling through them. They all had the same voltage, but since their resistances differ, they get different amounts of current. Hopefully we remember from Ohm's law that the current is equal to the voltage. In this case, all branches are getting 9 volts divided by the individual resistor. The resistor that's the smallest number, since we're dividing, will give us the largest current. So in this case, the smallest resistance would be in this middle resistor, and that would give us the highest current. When we take a look at the total current coming out of the battery box, we see that we're over a thousand milliamps and a little reflection would show us that this is actually a good value here. Okay, so we're a little over a thousand milliamps and it turns out that that total current should be the sum of all these individual currents. Because as the current reaches this junction, it splits into three paths. We can call this I total. And then the three paths would be I1, I2, and finally I3. And since charge cannot be created or destroyed, I1 plus I2 plus I3 should equal the total current from this circuit. So to recap, resistance is a measure of the opposition to the flow of the electrons. It depends upon, when we're talking wires, the length of the wire, the area of the wire, and the resistivity of the wire. When we want to know how much current is traveling through a certain part of a circuit, we look at the voltage and we look at the resistance. That will allow us to predict the current. In a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. In a parallel circuit, you get different currents in different branches. The branch with the least resistance gets the most current. In a series circuit, the voltages must total up to the voltage of the battery. Whereas in a parallel circuit, all the voltages will equal the voltage of the battery. So that is a quick summary of some of the major ideas we saw with electricity.